Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new camp build. Today we are down in the ash heap working on a warehouse that's been converted to have a kind of loft style apartment in it, such as we can in Fallout. It's come out quite well, I think. Yeah, this one uh, gave me a few headaches, but I'm quite pleased with how it's come out. Building a loft style conversion in uh, Fallout can be quite difficult, the game doesn't really facilitate that in a way that's going to look good, but I've sort of got the vibe going and it looks quite cool, I think. So let's have a look at where we are, right down at the bottom of the ash heap today, there's our little warehouse type camp, there's Welch Station, we're just behind the Overseer's house, which is about here. So cool little spot, nice open flat area, there's one right testing site, and obviously you can see we are way down at the bottom, 76 all the way up there, so right off the beaten path, but uh, a cool little spot anyway. So let's jump in and take a look at this. So I've got the first foundation in, as uh, this ground is not quite as level as it looks, and these little bits of metal here kind of get in the way. So I had to put them in, take them out, put them in, take them out over and over. But we have now a 4x6 foundation. And because we're building a warehouse, we're running into a couple of challenges here. That is, making it look like a warehouse requires a certain amount of size to it. And this is somewhat modelled on the Buxton Beer House up at the Sons of Dane compound. Sort of similar shape to that. But um, obviously building big, as I've said before, it's hard to make that look complete and fully decorated and basically have it come out well without it uh, looking either kind of spartan or way too big. So uh, it's a bit of a challenge on this one, but it's come out okay. It's about as small as you can go to have a warehouse still look like a warehouse without being... Uh, sort of too small, but also without having it too hugely large as well. So as you see here, we've got some simple walls just around the outside of the foundation here, leaving the front entrance open, closing up the back here. We've got a set of roofs here just coming in over the first set of foundations, and then some half walls on the top that will just lift that centre section of the roof up a little higher so that we've got that warehouse vibe and also room to put a loft in it. Kinda. <laughs> so let's close up this last bit of the roof. This is dead simple to do. It's... Uh, just a simple snapping job for now to get the main structure in place. The complicated bit will come in a moment. <laughs> so we're going to close up this back edge. Yeah, the thing with the loft for me was that uh, obviously it's supposed to be just the whole upper floor, which is not really going to work when you combine it with a warehouse. And if you build something that's too tall, in my opinion at least, it tends to not look that great. Which if you look at the camp I did last week, um, I deliberately kept that low to the ground so that the uh, profile would look better. And um, it can be pulled off with something tall, and I think I've managed it here. But sometimes when you go put straight walls up, it does end up looking a little bit, um, well, boxy or just overly tall, and the proportions look off. So that was the thing I wanted to avoid with this. But obviously we need some of that height for a loft to work. So for this entrance, this is where we had a few issues. So, if you're going to struggle with this, then maybe just stop at this point and have a square entrance here with just a big opening. Or close it off and put a tiny door in it, because that could work as well. But, um, I wanted to do something a bit more interesting, and it was a bit of a struggle. So, we're going to get a little roof here over the, for want of a better word, porch. And there's a technique here that will be very handy if you do want to build a kind of porch that doesn't use the prefab ones we've got. Because we can have some floating roofs, or will require some floating roofs. So I'm going to pull out these two large walls here. We needed to put them in before so that we could put the triangle ones at the top. Now we've got the, the roofs just over the entrance there. Now these angled walls, these larger ones with the angled bottoms on them, they are a nightmare to get in, so a little patience and persistence is required to persuade them to snap. But now I need that wall on the side off, which as we see it doesn't want to remove. So I'm going to head over and just swap this roof out here that's connected to it for a flat one. Now the uh, roof I was using, I can't do it with, but with the different textured ones, in this case I'm going to use the glass one, I can. And now that it's no longer connected to the one on the right, we can just take it out. And then we snap a roof back onto the one that we've left behind. Voila, floating roof, dead easy. I had to mess around for a while to figure that one out, and uh, there was a YouTube video that helped me out, but I'm sorry to say I can't remember who it was, it was a bit of an old one. But uh, I've shortened the process down there. As you can see, we now have a nice opening. So, the loft bit. Getting the staircase up to this without it looking bad is challenging, but uh, we're just building the loft section in the centre where the roof is a bit higher. We've got a cutout section effectively in the upper area where that staircase is. So that's just at the end of the building there. 
and we're going to close it off with some glass walls. Now I'm going to put some corner pieces on above these in a moment, and one of them I struggled to get in, and it just depends where it is in relation to the foundation. I just had to pop the wall back one in order to make the snap in. If it's in the wrong place, it won't go, but uh, easy enough to change. So if you have a look online at lofts and the architectural design of them, you tend to find that either the top section is closed off, or the section underneath is closed off, or nothing. But you don't tend to find the whole thing closed off. The reason I've gone for a different view here is because it just looked a little better with the rest of the warehouse. And also because if the front area is going to be a crafting space, which it is, then you probably don't want the fumes and dust and everything blowing into your apartment. And having it open, it needed some division, but uh, just using furniture to create that kind of uh, effect was not really dramatic enough, so I went with the full glass walls. So we're going to close this off here. I will eventually close this entire upper section off with uh, two more walls around the staircase there. But uh, I did that off camera, so we'll see that in a bit. So I'm going to put a little walkway around the top here. And I use the word walkway loosely because you won't actually be able to walk around it. It's basically going to be used for decoration. But um, you need to be careful where you snap these in because these floors need to follow the foundations below. They need to be directly above. So we're going to put some walls in in a second, and if they're sort of off-center or off-set, then you'll find that uh, you can't snap the walls in, so... The specific position of the floors here is quite important. Now, let's get some posts underneath to provide a bit of support. I've actually screwed up here, I want them on the outside, not the inside, so... Uh, we'll figure that out and then swap them over. There we go. Push it over to the outside. Just using this extra floor to force it to snap to the corner rather than part way along the edge. Nice and easy when it wants to snap. It's been a bit awkward about sitting across the join there. There we go. Now, obviously, the inside edge doesn't look massively supported, and you could always put some more posts around if you wanted. In the end, with the decoration and everything, I completely filled the budget on this, so keeping it to a minimum is probably worthwhile, not putting too much extraneous stuff in there. But uh, it works. It looks cool. So I'm going to extend out over the porch here because I want some supports for this roof. So, there we go. We'll repeat the procedure on the other side. There's one on each corner. Had to use the half floor there and then the longer one just to make sure that the middle of this extra floor was over the corner of the foundation, which is where I want that post to go. And now we're just going to put a post on the corner here just to shore up the entrance a little bit so you can see it there we need to use the floors again to make it snap in i can now snap the wall back in because it's right on the edge if it was part way along the wall wouldn't go in it also wouldn't look right so there's that too but just in case i move the wall out of the way extend that floor over a little bit stick this one off to the side so that we can snap onto what is effectively the corner again come on there we go post in now we'll take those back out shove that wall back in there we go. It's quite a simple structure, really. There's a couple of bits that are, as I say, a bit of a pain. Getting that arch over the door was the real challenge. And, uh, yeah, you do need those roofs in first. So if you want to do something similar, do check out uh, that section again and uh, follow the build order carefully, because otherwise it can be kind of awkward. But last couple of little bits to polish this up, and I think we are about ready to head off and decorate this place. So I will see you in the tour in just a moment. Much decoration later. Let's have a look around this place. So a few little bits outside. I've got some crops there, mostly for doing daily challenges, because I've kind of moved away from using them. The Collectron's also stuffed right at the back there. That's the overseer's house on the left. A few little bits of decoration at the front here. You could put the stairs on the front if you wanted. I fancied having them around the side. If you put them on the front, they won't meet in the middle unless you use the wooden ones. Um, those would look out of place on this, so... I put concrete stairs on the sides instead and close up the front edge to give me somewhere to stand and shoot should any of the mole miners come up from Welch. And we've got a couple of punji boards just to keep them out of my crafting space at the front here. <laughs> so, fairly simple little design on the front. As I say, we're absolutely crammed up to the budget here, so uh, no room for anything extra. Loads and loads of detail, which is really what made the difference here, because as you saw before, we had a big open space out front here and filling this up and making it look complete was going to be a challenge let's see i've done my current favorite thing to do which is make my workbenches stick out a little bit 
Technically, I didn't have enough workbenches for this, so I actually used a, a stash box to kind of back one of the things on, but it looks cool. Good little loop around the outside, which is where I have put the vendors. And just to make them look a little bit more full and complete, I've got the new cola machine and the milk machine just in between there. The back presents a, a more smooth surface to the middle section as well, if you do that, which is part of the idea. Shelter tucked in the corner. Pop through our decon arch. There we go. Looking pretty cool, I think. I like the lights that run down the middle as well. Quite happy with how that's come out. Loads of stuff on the walls here. Just threw up the, uh, all the posters I could find and uh, the scoreboards, stuff like that from the previous seasons, just to decorate an otherwise large blank surface and make it look a little bit more ramshackle and a bit more interesting. Like somebody's been here a while. <laughs> Let's head on inside to the apartment part. And this is where we kind of struggle to make it look like a loft too much because most of the apartment's on the ground floor. But the bedroom part does it, which we'll see in a moment. One of my favourite kitchen designs, as always, we have a little uh, struggle to find appropriate kitchen um, furniture, I suppose is the word. We've got the Tipsy Tom set there, providing the work surfaces. I've just doubled up on each other there. A little sitting room just underneath the stairs here. And I put Yasmin's cooking station in there, which does function as a cooking station as well as an ally sort of station as well, so that's cool. A little bit of decoration around, all the essentials. Dropped a couple of walls in this corner here because we needed a bathroom somewhere. I realised kind of during the decoration phase that I didn't have one. So I picked up that clean shower recently. <laughs> Don't know why I didn't the first time around, but uh, I grabbed it the other day. So we've gone fully clean for the bathroom in here. There is wallpaper on that wall. Unfortunately, there's a weird bug at the moment where it sometimes disappears. God knows why, but uh, you have to use your imagination for this one. It's the same as the rest of it, those uh, white brick walls. You can kind of see into the bathroom from the bedroom, but I figure there, uh, it probably doesn't matter too much. You could close it off with a solid wall rather than a glass one. You can see what I'm talking about in a minute. Bit of a tight squeeze to get through here. Didn't want too much stuff down here, but I did need a little bit of decoration. So a couple of sideboards and plants. A couple of plushies. Looks nice. Let's head up the stairs into our loft bedroom. <laughs> So it's uh, a bit of a challenge to create a loft type vibe, but uh, I think we managed it more or less here. Little uh, desk space there. A few bits and pieces on top of the dressers. Let's chill. Got the kitty, gotta have the kitty. And I've used the clean uh, vault -Tec bed here, just because it fits slightly closer to the wall, takes up slightly less room. It's a minuscule difference, but it does work slightly better. You can see I've added the extra glass walls there, which uh, eh, I think it works. And uh, we've got uh, the doorway here and the wall on the right, which both of which have the big thick bit of metal across the bottom, which uh, I did just to match up with the doorway. It's not ideal. Yasmin's going to get in our way here, so we'll drift on by. Head back out to the crafting area. Choosing doors to go in these glass walls is a bit of a problem. There's a wooden greenhouse door that doesn't really look right. There's these security doors which are close, but again, not quite right. Yeah. It's a bit of a battle, but uh, I think it looks okay the way I went. Little power armor area, fairly simple, looks good. I like to have the power armor station sort of pride of place in the center because it's just such a big object, it makes a good set piece. There you go. Loads of little bits of detail, loads of stuff to look at just to keep the place looking busy and complete. Uh, looking at that top walkway, as I said, you can't really get up there because putting a staircase in will look frankly bad and having a door up the top from the bedroom wouldn't look great either, so crammed it with appliances and furniture and chairs and all manner of junk and stash boxes just random stuff that I put up there chucked it in at all weird angles just to make it look reasonably organic makes the place look packed out I'm quite happy with how that's come out that wallpaper incidentally I believe is the Brotherhood of Steel one which I wanted some metal wallpaper on there but I didn't want it looking too much like the warehouse stuff because the back of those walls doesn't look particularly fantastic and it's annoying to put stuff on but uh, yeah Pretty pleased with how that one came out. As you can see, I changed the top uh, set of half walls as well out for windows to let a bit more light in too. But there we go. Do you hope you guys enjoyed that one. I'm quite happy with how this came out. If you did like the video, please do consider dropping subs and likes. I very, very much appreciate it. Do check out social media links, merch store and channel memberships all available down below the video as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel that way, it really, really helps out and I very much appreciate it. And if you get a chance to join us for live streams as well, we are of course playing Fallout 76 and continuing with Control. 
So, for now, thank you very much, and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon. Mm.